So um, we'll turn to the first item, um, and Gassan, Corbin, please proceed with the discussion of the holiday calendar and flexible holiday rules. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, as you are well aware, you, you asked for this item to be on this committee's agenda, mm -hmm. and we wanted to go over <clears throat> the background as it relates to the actual proposal. And for, for context, you know, as we, uh, as a utility have to be consistent with civil service rules, much like the city and other agencies. And by rule, we are committed to providing 10 uh, holidays for our uh, employees. Uh, and through the years, additional days have been proposed by civil service uh, and approved by council, uh, <clears throat> such as uh, Juneteenth Day, um, Indigenous People Day, and the two Eve days, the Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, so amounting to 14 days in total. Uh, and what we wanted to do, uh, while we wanted to be consistent with civil service and other agencies, we want to be a little bit uh, flexible because we're a utility that provides you know, daily service to our customers and we wanted to minimize the <coughs> days that we are closed so what we're proposing uh, for your approval today is have 13 days that are fixed holidays, again, to be consistent with the, with the city and other agencies while making, uh, creating a floating holiday for our employees so they can uh, take advantage of a day that's more personal uh, or driven by their uh, own um, religion or whatever special occasion they, they choose to, to, uh, to use to take that day. And we would maintain an open day, uh, open for business day, which would be the, the New Year's Eve day. So uh, that's what uh, on the table for your consideration. We think it's flexible. It, uh, again, it allows us to continue uh, with an additional day of service to our customers and um, We've discussed this with uh, civil service. They seem to be amicable or um, uh, amenable to. Their rule uh, seems to allow it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's what's on the table for your consideration. OK. Um, I just had a couple of questions about just what we've done in the past. Um, historically, this has been set by the executive director in consistency with state holidays and what happens with civil service. And this is a mere formality, is there any deviation compared to the previous holiday calendar mm -hmm. other than a floating holiday? So in the past, um, yes, there's some some deviation. And in the past, we've only considered two additional holidays. Um, and I guess, lack of a better term, did not adopt other days. Okay. Um, so the city may have enjoyed 14 or 15 days last year. We only did 13. Okay. Um, we just, you know, had a reasonable approach to what we wanted to do. Um, so, and this year it probably is more consistent with that slight deviation of having that floating holiday that, uh, to my knowledge, other agencies are not considering. But they may, if if uh, this ends up being you know, um, more useful and feasible for us. What does a holiday cost us? I mean, we have these rules that you have to pay double and a half, two, two and a half times for people. If we have a holiday, how many employees do we have to have still reporting to work and what is the budget for that? Yeah, that's a very good question. Obviously that challenges us and uh, our thinking and our uh, decision-making process. Um, it depends on the the time, it, I guess, the year where how intense the, the staffing needs to be, but the range of costs is between the fifty thousand to ninety thousand dollars for that given day. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe other agencies are challenged the same way we do. That's why we want to be a little bit more thoughtful about how generous we want to be with our employees. Mm -hmm. 
So we're adding two, are you saying we're adding two holidays if we approve this calendar? Yes. So we have more than a holiday a month right now, the way this plays out if this I mean, happens. Yeah, on average. Yeah. And one would be floating. That's the distance between. But it's still a, a holiday. It's, it's a, a holiday. holiday. Yeah. And then what, what is the story with, um, what, what are the parameters on paid time off? You know. Um, well, I'm not sure what you. What well, I'm you saying mean. we're starting out before you even get to vacation, sick leave, or anything with 14 days off a year. Then what's our what's our policy on vacation days? Does everyone get the same amount of vacation? Is it triggered to? There's a sliding scale. You start with two weeks worth of vacation that you. You know, huh. um, gain throughout the, the year, and I, again, I'm not sure, but uh, there's a milestones for additional weeks that you gain through. So you have like the three. Year. I think it's three point three. I don't know, HR's yeah. in here, but three point three um, annual in sick you earn every um, biweekly, and that quote equates to two weeks of leave a year. Yeah, and I think at, fi at five year marks, I think you go up by a day or two a year, something mm -hmm. like that. So you have the bonus days for, like uh, Tyler said, once you meet certain anniversary dates. Maurice, anything? Uh, I don't feel like we have much choice on this. It's just, so it is, and we just. I mean, many of the days are either uh, cities, mm -hmm. state, Federal. Or federal. Oh, federal holidays. I, mean, yeah. I, I don't have any other yeah. discussion points. It's pretty standard. Mm -hmm. And then the earned time off, be the sick leave or annual leave, is pretty standard as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any other issues or concerns. Okay, do we have an action? Or is there an no, it's just a discussion item, and we'll do take the action item at the, at the board. Okay. Um, then if there's no more discussion, we'll go on to the strategic planning update with Tyler. Okay. Morning. Good morning. Can we get um, can we get mine? Yeah. Great. Um, yeah. So we're here today to talk about we are officially one year in to implementation of our strategic plan. Um, and so what I had provided in your packet was um, the draft version of the 2023 um, work plan, which is um, a similar document to what you had received a year ago. Um, the key difference is that we've um, We've showed you which tactics were completed last year, which tactics are still underway, and provided some notes on why those were not completed in 2022 and why they've been continued into 2023. And then we've included um, draft tactics uh, to be done during 2023. Um, and so the you know today, what I really wanted to go through, always a reminder of our strategic framework, looking at our focus areas, our goals, and our expected results. Um, and then I was just gonna go through each of the six focus areas and highlight a few of the tactics that we completed last year, um, a few that are underway, and a few that um, we're adding for this year. Um, and as always, the way that we are um, planning for all of the work under this, it's very iterative. So I think each of the groups probably added somewhere between um, eight and 10 tactics at their first quarterly meeting. Um, and then we gave them additional, you know, context around what we're looking to do to add this year and we're hoping at the second quarter that we'll continue to add additional tactics for the year um, as they continue to sort of get into this cadence of adding additional work as work is kind of ticked off. Um, so I will just start with financial stability and I don't know if Gray you wanted to provide any additional details but um, I think 2022 is a, a great year for the financial stability working group. Um, I know a huge milestone that we completed last year, which was a, a long-term goal of the board, um, was to review and update our purchasing policies. So we did issue a new purchasing policy last year, which I know has been a huge help to just to me personally, but I think to many of our employees and uh, codifying and standardizing all of our processes around purchasing. Um, and I've also personally noticed a difference in how we um, use our budget approval prior to purchases. Um, so we've created this new process where uh, there's an e-sign of uh, the budget department approving all the purchases and then they directly send those requests to the purchasing department. 
Um, so that's a, a major change that I think has been pretty instrumental. Um, and then, you know, one of the bigger other tactics of the year was to incorporate affordability outcomes in our financial plan development. Um, and I know we've talked a little bit about that with the board, and I think we'll plan to talk more about that with the board in the coming months. Um, but just looking at ways that we can really make sure that we're um, balancing the needs of our customers with the needs of the utility um, in our financial planning. Um, so some of the tactics that we've continued from 2022 into 2023, meaning that they weren't um, completely completed in 2022, and so we've essentially just extended the deadline. Um, some highlights here are um, inventorying our um, different commodities um, that we purchase. I know that there were some staffing challenges in the procurement department. I think some folks had left that were working on that project. Um, and so I know they had begun on some of the, the larger com commodities, and I think that they, um, as they you know, rehire some folks and, and bring in some additional staff, are looking to um, continue that project. I think it's kind of a longer term project, so we may expect that one to continue for a few years just in terms of all of the different large commodities that we purchase. So, you know, it's one of those things that we can say, oh, it's, you know, we've gotten through, you know, four or five things. Maybe next year we'll do four or five more things um, just to make sure we're getting the most advantageous terms on those um, sort of larger purchase items that we do on a regular basis. Um, another one that we're continuing to work on is um, looking at our project delivery unit and how we can um, expand their role in sort of being more proactive about seeking grant funding. I know we had created a position in that group um, last year, and I think they began to recruit, but I, I, they just didn't find a candidate, um, I think, that, that we um, wanted to hire for that position, so we're continuing to recruit for that position um, this year, and we'll continue to look to fill that. And then just looking ahead to 2023, some of the key um, tactics for, for next year, or for this year, I should say, uh, are to ensure that we leverage our new financial software that we're implementing to really promote transparency. Um, I think that's going to be one of the biggest advantages of the new financial software um, is just the fact that it's going to unlock a lot of tools for us in um, sort of doing data analysis and being able to, to show how we're spending and um, paying things. And then um, another big thing is, is looking at how we can maybe look at some uh, legislative opportunities um, to perhaps change the way that we're able to collect on delinquencies so that we can really start to drive down um, those um, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? B bad accounts. Yeah, bad debts. <laughs> bad debts that, that we carry um, on a monthly basis. Um, so, you know, I know um, we've talked a lot about in, in other cities, um, utility bills are tied to the property rather than to the tenant. Um, and so therefore the utility is able to sort of continue to either use a lien on the property or other means to collect on those debts. Whereas with us, you know, if a, if a tenant closes their account, and they have a large balance, there's there's not really much we can do to collect on that. Um, and so over time, we end up just writing it off. Tyler Davis, um, I, don't, I don't know if this goes under this bucket. You were here yesterday, Gray, I think, at the, you know, obviously the Finance Committee meeting. Um, there's a lot of concern among board members about the way that contracts keep ballooning. Sure. And there was a request to get that I think we need to figure out what's going on that, that causes that. When you start out with a contract that goes up 400%, sure. it's kind of like somebody's got, you know, there's worry somebody's got a blank check to when it comes to whatever the cost is of, of the changes. So can we add that to... Well, we have thing? a tactic for uh, change order monitoring and reporting. So I think that fits nicely into the, the comments, you know, feedback. Is that we, later on or what? It's within the work plan is, is a... A change yeah, order. I think that maybe is just exactly. one we didn't put on the slides. Let me see where it's at. In so here. it's definitely a focus area. And, and, and we had the on. change order committee. Was there discussion or a work group that we've had in the past that was yeah. composed of staff and board members? Is that we one continued of the that? Tactics? So that's okay. that's a helpful and a useful tool. Uh, so Who's on it from we'll the could, board? It's a, a change. So the, there is a work group that deciphers the legitimacy of the change orders mm -hmm. and accounting for it, so it doesn't surprise anybody. But there, I think you may be referring to a group that involved board members. It is. And I Correct. think that's the only really vehicle for you to become more comfortable with the decision-making process that we go through. I mean, yeah. sometimes you look at the numbers and they are you know, overwhelming, 400% is, is a lot, but when you 
bring perspective to it, and they say, oh yeah, that makes sense, but we, I would love for you to be more involved on the front end, so when you see it, you're like, yeah, I know why we got here. So yeah. Just FYI, so, um, the chair of finance, uh, Director Sloth, mm -hmm. has now um, requested that the working group is started again, okay. and he's, re he's actually appointed Director Markowitz to that working group, and he will then provide the other um, uh, members that will be appointed to that working group. So if anyone is interested here, we can follow up with Director Sloss regarding that working group. But Gray and Ryan will both be on that working group mm -hmm. and another um, board member as well. Okay, yeah, I, I guess my only question was, should it be listed under our, yep. our tactics yeah. that yep. we're, we're focusing yeah, on? Yeah, so that's something we need to add as a 2023 okay. tactic that we're restarting this working group and so that way we can track progress on that throughout the year. Yeah, and not just track progress. I mean, there's some root, there, there's gotta be, there's some root issues here that yep. should be examined um, yeah. on, on the thing. The, if the goal is to minimize change orders, or that's, amendment, one, that's one, yeah. or amendments, or maybe even bringing more clarity to the the decisions or the path that led us to these change orders. Yeah, that's or when we're starting out with something, are we just bidding out the first part of the project and then whoever has it, has it, and they kind of can keep yeah. going with it. And then, then how do you ever have checks and checks on what they're saying the cost is, you know, for for doing it. I mean, are you really end, you end up with the most reasonable cost if as opposed to if you had bid it out in a different way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a certainly very legitimate uh, question. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, all right. Um, I'm going to move on to so this is just sort of a snapshot of the financial stability dashboard. So you can see there's quite a bit of blue on there, which is good. That means we're on track. There are a few items that we need to sort of continue to drive progress on. Um, one in particular I know is something that Dr. Scholas has challenged us on, which is really looking at ways that we can generate additional revenues um, through use of different you know, channels. Um, and so this is something that I know this year we're gonna be looking to um, continue to use our resources through some of the trade organizations that we belong to to gather um, information on best practices in the industry and, and try and drive some progress on that one. Um, and then, you know, of course, we have our metrics at the bottom. Um, one of my tactics <laughs> that I'm assigned for this year is to um, develop a better way for us to collect the data that goes into these metrics. So that's something I'm working on right now so that we can create a standard way of getting this data and so we can keep it better up to date because the way it works now, I have to send out a flurry of emails like the week before these meetings and ask everyone to send me their little bits. So I'm creating a sort of central place where everyone can just put their data on a monthly basis and that'll ensure these stay up to date. So the data that you're seeing in some cases may not be the most up to date. Um, and so that's something I'm gonna be working on uh, this quarter. And can you explain the chart? If it says 100 out of 100 and it's like the first inch in, Yep. What is what is the rest of that line represent? So the line represents the, um, so as you can see at the bottom, it has the years. Um, oh, I see, I see, okay, got but it. But of got course, it. like as you, so the, the longer bars, of course, are the goals, right? And so mm -hmm. those are the ones that have a five-year traje trajectory. Mm -hmm. As you continue to add more tactics, the length of the blue the portion is gonna get shorter. Um, because you're sort of adding additional work that's gonna pull back your progress. So I know this is something we talked about at the last meeting that, you, that I fully agree with you that it doesn't give you a good snapshot. It makes it look like we are almost done with our five years worth of progress now when we really are not. And it's just a, this tool is not ideal for finding a way to do that. Um, so I've challenged our consultants that help us with this tool to find a better way to display this and we're still thinking about the best way to do that because I agree that it is misleading. Um, and so we need to find a better way to. Just really quickly, what's the difference between the 100 out of 100 that's blue versus the 100 out of 100 that is gray? <laughs> well, uh, gray is complete. Meaning that that tactic is complete. Um, okay. The ones that are blue are either underway still or it's a goal. And so those are kind of never complete because that's it has the five-year trajectory. But what would 80 out of 47 with still showing gray mean? Still blue. Bottom. Still showing blue. It's about 80 out of 47. It's still blue. Yeah. It's still blue. So that means that um, I don't know why it's out of. Out of 47. Because it's 100 out of 100. That's. Oh, uh, the first uh, percentage is the uh, amount that we have completed, and the second, the denominator 
there um, is the expected percent. Um, so the way that the dashboard works is that it sort of takes the amount of time that we've said it's gonna take us to do something and it spreads out the expected amount over that total amount of time. So long story short, that means we're ahead of schedule. So we're, it, it expects us to be about halfway done and we're 80% done. This doesn't make any sense. Tell them it doesn't make any sense. They're putting too much in one chart. Yeah, yeah I, I agree that it's not ideal. Um, Double charts may be the answer. Yeah. yeah. And I have a question on targets. We're talking about cash on hand. When you get down to 90, you're almost in default position. But shouldn't we have a different target other than 90? Right. Well, we use 125 for internal target, but 90 okay. is what the, the general bond resolution has. So but we don't want to be too, if we're the lowest, why do I want to, if we're the, the, the barely past oh, the bond okay. resolution it's number. Yeah. That's, that's fair, to, fair to say, that's right. Yeah, so I mean, I think if we if we have an internal target that we prefer, then it's probably best to change Could that change, to what yeah. our internal yeah. target is rather than the bare minimum. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's something we can certainly update. We're not white knuckling it, Janet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're not gonna white knuckle it at 90. <laughs> no, that's not a good goal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, regardless, it's good Let's news that it we're down. above both the bare minimum yeah. and our internal goals, okay. so. All right, I'm gonna move to the next focus area, which is technology modernization. I think some highlights from last year. Um, we did complete an inventory of our current software and systems, which I know was a big goal of our IT department. Um, and then documented our cybersecurity policies and um, I think certainly everyone in the room whose staff uh, knows that we've deployed several new training resources um, in order to enhance our cybersecurity. Um, looking at some of the things that we're continuing into 2023 um, would be a sort of process around deciding how we handle our document management. Um, there are some state requirements around, as a public agency, we, we manage all of our documents and retain documents. Um, we currently don't have any kind of specific staff or policies around that, and so we're continuing to look at um, best practices amongst other agencies uh, within the state for how we need to handle document retention. Um, we're also continuing to deploy additional um, video uh, and security needs throughout our facilities. I think this one's quite a, quite a bit underway and I think there were a few um, facilities that we're just looking to finish out this year. And then um, they're installing firewalls at each of our facilities. I don't really understand what this means, but <laughs> um, I'm told that there, I think that there are two more to install um, and then that will be complete this year. I think they had some, um, some sort of challenges there that they're, they're looking to overcome. Um, in 2023, some exciting things that we're looking to do this year would be to implement our new customer portal. Um, this is a tactic for 2023 that shows up both in technology modernization and customer service because it is important to both of those areas. Um, so this is um, part of the smart metering project is that we're gonna change to a new customer portal that has a lot of new um, tools for our customers, um, particularly around notifications. Um, we're also looking at um, an evaluation of our payroll and HR processes associated with our timesheets. So um, you may or may not be aware, but we currently still use paper timesheets. Um, and so really? this is, yes. Um, so I this is something that, that. Um, I know our, our IT department has been, you know, looking at different ways that we can implement a, a digital time card system. They've sort of developed the technology and now it's just a matter of integrating it with our HR systems um, so that we can actually roll that out. Um, and so that is something that we are challenging them to uh, to work on this year through including it as a tactic. Do we have to custom design something? Yeah. I've, I've, there are so many products that are out there. Yeah, yeah they're just products. Isn't it? So my understanding is that it, it is a module that plugs into our, our HR system that we use. This is certainly not my area of expertise, mm -hmm. um, but because we do have sort of an in-house payroll department, um, it's not as simple as like ADP or paychecks or some of the systems that most other places use. Um, but I think that it's really just a matter, my understanding is the challenge is that it's a matter of making sure that our HR systems are continuously kept up to date um, because we do see quite a bit of sort of movement of staff around between departments and managers um, is what creates challenges where, you know, a manager has to approve time on a weekly basis. If an employee moves, 
um, and then there's a new manager that has to recoup their time. But that's sort of the hinge point that we need to work through is developing a process around that. So the good news is it's on the list for us to do this year. <laughs> Janet, are you? I, I'm just in shock, like I think everyone yeah. is here, that well, we have to invent this thing as opposed to just have I mean, shouldn't we be, should we use an ADT or something? Some stuff is hard that we talked about. Yep. This just doesn't seem like hard. one of the hard things. I don't think it is. I think it's more a matter of just getting the right people in the room together to make it happen. That's my sense. So and how so long then, is this going to take? To fit? Is this like something we can knock out this month? I, I think that we had set it for um, completion by the second quarter. Okay. Um, it's just, like I said, it's just a matter of figuring out who all the right people are, getting them in the room and figuring out, you know, what they need in order to get it done. So Gray and I just had that conversation yesterday, and if we do not meet that, I mean, we're I'm still a chalk in chalk, even four years into filling timesheet by hand. Um, that if we're not a, able to do what we need to do, we're gonna just overhaul it and then go the obvious way, which is possibly outsourcing it. So, great to be to be honest with you. So, all right. Uh, so just looking at the dashboard here, we do have some yellow on here, and I think this is just a matter of getting some of these um, items updated. I know we had some folks who weren't able to attend the last um, uh, quarterly update meeting, and so I need to follow up with them and, and get updates. But um, generally, in terms of you know some of the um, metrics, I think uh, we've been getting, I think, weekly updates on the phishing test uh, rates. Um, and those seem to be um, in line with industry standards. Um, and some of these other items, we still need to update the data on those. So this one needs a little bit of work. OK, question. Yeah, there's no part of it. Right. Yep. Um, help desk phone calls. That is internal employee help desk phone calls? Yep. Getting assistance internally? Yeah, so the idea with that one is we were trying to figure out a way to um, measure sort of like employee uptake of Technology being able to sort of solve issues on their own that maybe we can drive down um, the number of help desk requests, um, meaning that people are kind of figured out how to do things on their own. Okay, and I'm going to assume this billing error is 0.0% 0 .0 that right. cannot that be customer. Be, yeah, that one needs to be okay. updated. We were, we were waiting on that data um, okay. at the time of having to per put together the packet. Can we say NA, I mean, unavailable or something rather than something. zero? Something, NA, I mean, not reported. Not zero. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yep. And t Tyler, what is the goal for getting the targets finally set? I mean, you, you, do you have an internal goal for that? It is. It, I, I also have a tactic assigned for that. Um, and so for most of them, it's a matter of, honestly, just uh, the staff who are responsible for that just giving me an idea of what they think it should be. And then probably at the, the next meeting of this group, the next operations committee meeting, coming to you and saying, is this acceptable? Um, I think the, the challenge there has been we wanted the board initially to kind of give us some guidance on what the targets should be, and then we realized that you kind of need more information to decide what a target should be. So yeah. we need to make a pr proposition and then have you sort of bless if, it. If we could get benchmarking information. A lot of, a lot of the ones in here that there already is a target for is because there's a benchmark that exists. The ones that there isn't a target for is because there is not a benchmark that exists. Okay. And so that's why we just need to decide what we think our ben our benchmark should okay. be. Um, so looking to workforce development, um, some work that was done here um, in 2022 would be to create um, a framework for how we want to look at um, our sort of stakeholder engagement process around our workforce model. So that's looking at our civil service system and what other systems may be out there that are available. Um, we also began uh, an internal market study to look at um, pay within the marketplace, um, looking ahead to a, a, an update to the uniform pay plan through civil service. And a key um, one under this group that we accomplished last year was to relaunch our Pipeliner, which is our internal employee newsletter, um, which I know has been a huge um, help to our customers, or excuse, our internal customers. Um, in 2022 or 2023, um, things that are continued here uh, would be to uh, continue to look to engage with an external consultant to look at those um, different workforce issues and opportunities uh, within the workforce model. Um, 
we're also looking at um, sort of similar with the time card issues with the HR system um, to maintain a more complete staff directory, um, which is something that, um, you know, we, we currently have essentially like a phone directory that has like a name and a phone number. But, um, you know, we've heard from our, our employees that having a more complete directory that gives you, you know, what does this person do? What department are they in? Who do they work for? Some additional information so that people can have a, an easier time of starting to put together the pieces of who do I need to contact about this thing, um, which I think would be a huge help. And then looking ahead to 2023, um, you know, some of the things we're looking at there is to um, really look at the current performance management approach and develop an enhanced program to be developed this year. Um, we currently use uh, the sort of civil service based system for performance management um, that I think universally everyone pretty much agrees is not useful. Um, and so I know that the HR department is, is really interested in looking at a better way of managing performance. Um, and so that's something we're gonna look into this year. Um, and then to really look at developing uh, what are the leadership and supervisory training needs uh, amongst our department so that we can enhance um, the sort of management training uh, that we provide to our employees. And the pipeline newsletter is, is electronic? Uh, yes. Um, and then how, do we, how are we ensuring our sort of um, not office-based employees are able to access and, 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 and process that? Yeah, so uh, the IT department did install kiosks at all of the, the central yard and, and the plants um, so that those employees are able to check in with their emails that way. Um, we know that that's not an ideal way of doing it, and mm -hmm. so I think we are looking at ways that we can provide you know, poster versions of those, um, but I know that's something we're looking to do this year. Is there a, a place where our non-office-based employees congregate every morning or every, so all of them start at a point certain? Yep, and so that's where certain. those kiosks are, and then also it's up to those managers to disseminate that information during their morning meetings and things like that. Because I, cause what, I, what I'm concerned about is this could be a thing like telehealth, yeah. where everybody build telehealth as the thing that was gonna open up access to all these people in rural populations and communities, but really all it ended up doing was giving people that already had choices more choices. Right. And the people that we weren't reaching still had terrible Wi-Fi and couldn't access anything. Yep. So I, I, I know that we have a bunch of employees that are not office-based mm -hmm. that are engaged in lots of ways, but they don't sit behind a desk every day. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we need to be specifically in, you know, aware of that and intentional about making sure they're included. Yep. yep. Good point. Absolutely. All right. So looking here, you can see there's quite a bit of red on here. And I think most of that has to do with um, both the training and development and the motivate and train supervisor goals. Um, their goal leads uh, left the board last year. And so that's why progress really fell behind in those areas last year. And so we need to, you know, now that we're staffing up in those areas, again, we can sort of continue to drive progress in those areas. Yeah. I know we don't have uh, the, the, the total compensation summaries, which is reported as right. 100 out of 100. Right. So we... And what, what's gone out is not that. Sure. Yeah. And you, you expressed that to me. And so we need to... What I would like to do is... Um, because they did... that We did do something that is new that we've never done before. And I think that the, that is something that we want to, um, you know, document here. And so I think what I'd like to do is add a new, another new tactic for 2023 that is to expand what we did this year into more of a complete, um, and which I know is already in process, and so it's a matter of just documenting it here so we can track it. Okay, but they both have the same name in the, in the plan. The new one and the old one have the same name, but when you're just putting in what you're getting in terms of salary and overtime, that is not a total compensation plan. Right. And I, 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 I just wanna be, I think when we're reporting this stuff, we should be pretty transparent on things like that. Rather, and that's not transparent. Okay, I can look at ways that we can um, edit the tactic name. Um, I mean, because you say it's partially complete. We did X, but we didn't do Y. But yeah. it's not. It's not. It's not a hundred. Okay. All right, uh, moving forward to customer service excellence and stakeholder engagement. Um, quite a bit of progress in this area. 
mostly um, 2022 was really focused on analysis and sort of um, inventorying and making sure that um, we had all the information we needed to kind of continue to drive progress. Um, so, you know, some of these were inventorying our training and technology used by the, the customer service staff, um, conducting a skills and competencies, competencies gap analysis so that we can continue to develop better training programs and performance management tools. Um, and I know that they did initiate a customer service onboarding program for new employees because obviously pretty much all of our employees are in some way customer facing. Um, whether those be field employees or people who work in, in different roles. And so we wanted to make sure that all of those folks have some, some form of customer service skills so that you know, if a field worker is um, mm -hmm. approached in the field, they, they have the, the proper skills to answer a customer question or at least refer them to the proper places. Um, and we did uh, develop a utility communications plan uh, so that we can really advance um, proactive communication with our customers and stakeholders this year. Um, some things that were continued into this year were um, to identify and deploy those high impact and uh, training tools that can help to bridge those gaps, including refresher training. So like I said, 2022 is really focused around sort of inventorying those items and we're sort of designing 2023 around now taking that information and really developing new tools. Um, and the other key here is um, to finally implement the Varent software that we've been talking about for quite a while, um, which is a software that will uh, help our customer service representatives um, more standardize their responses and track um, different requests from our customers. Uh, and then looking ahead to 2023, um, again, really creating those internal training capacities uh, based off of the inventory work and the things that we did last year. Um, and we also would really like to deploy a customer service survey, um, looking at our full customer service base so that, um, you know, as we're implementing these improvement processes, we can actually document our success over time. Um, we don't really have a great baseline of where our customers are at. Um, and so we need to really do a baseline so that that way, you know, as we improve over time, we can actually show that, that that's being recognized by our customers. And so you can see here, um, we have uh, quite a bit of blue on this board. Uh, There's a few things here, for, for instance, the customer service surveys, uh, since we need to initiate that this year um, is red. And then um, looking at the metrics, I think there are some targets here that we need to continue to drive down. Uh, but I know that uh, in Gassan, I think we'll be presenting at the board meeting this month on some of the customer service metrics um, that have gone down, including the um, average speed of, of call answer. I think that one is out of date. I think it's gone down to closer to two minutes there. Um, I think it was nine minutes last month, wasn't it? Oh, it was for November. Yeah, so. November, I think it's continued yeah. to go down. Um, engagement and outreach events per month, per year, per, per quarter. Month. Per month. Per month, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so again, we need to set a target there. I think yeah. that was something that we were, we had initially been waiting to see like post COVID, what are we looking to mm -hmm. do? Um, so I think as part of the communications plan, I actually believe there's a target in there. So it's just a matter of reflecting that here. Okay. And it make sure that ties back to um, um, known and, a and active neighborhood associations. For sure. Because um, those are just easy. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and I know that that's a big component of the communications plan. Okay. Yep. All right, infrastructure resilience and reliability. Um, some two key items that were completed this year was a preliminary assessment of uh, the risks around our asset management and work order management system, um, which is a key first step towards um, a new system. Um, it's really just developing, you know, what are the issues that we're having today so that we can begin to identify what our needs are with a new system. Um, and we did establish an asset management working group that meets monthly now, um, which is working on that process so that we can begin to develop those, um, those needs for a new system. Um, the tactic that is continued through this year would be um, developing that scope of work and selecting a vendor uh, to develop a procurement instrument for the new asset management system. Um, so that was hoped to be done in 2022, but with the establishment of that asset management work group, um, that group has been diligently working along to, to get us to a point where we can 
complete that tactic in 2023. Uh, what's the difference between the first one under 2022 continued and new tactics for 2023, the first one under that, the needs assessment versus developing scope of work? And, and so, the, the so the, the one that is continued is that we are going to be looking to procure what would essentially just be an owner agent who would be our representative through the procurement of a system uh -huh. and would handle the integration of that system. The new tactic would be something that that consultant okay. would do. Okay, thank you. Uh, would be the actual needs assessment that would develop the RFP for the system itself. Yeah, and so thank you. So for 2023, that would be one of our big things that we need to complete. Um, and then another big thing that we've been working on through 2022 was really finding better ways to um, document the infrastructure work that we do do. Um, this is something that in that group I'm often saying, um, how do we show people that we do more than put um, barrels on top of piles of gravel? <laughs> um, and so it's really about documenting all of the different infrastructure work that's going on um, and then really developing that into a spreadsheet that we, um, we continuously update and develop a memo that we can use so that we can better communicate the work that we're doing. And so that's something looking into 2023, how do we take the work that we've done this year in terms of um, how do we collect all this data and now how do we put it in a way that's actually digestible and we can use to communicate with the board and our customers about the work that we are doing. Um, and then we'll also be looking to initiate a water treatment master plan um, so that we can drive improvements in our water treatment plants. All right, this is an area where I know that um, I just received the data yesterday um, for this one, so we'll be updating this for the next meeting. Um, but some decent progress here in terms of um, the work that needs to be done uh, on the infrastructure side, which is mostly focused on how do we better track the work that we're doing and communicate it and then how do we better plan for additional work in the future um one of the projects as i understand it we're doing is we're taking over the second part of um of uh finishing our projects from public department of public works right design like when we tear up a street we were go we were doing part of it and then public works to come behind us and, and do the finish out we're mm -hmm. going to take that over um and do all of the process ourselves but there's two separate categories here the on the bigger projects the jrr projects we do our work in conjunction with their contract and they come and finish the roadway and mm -hmm. and all that the sidewalk what you may be referring to is the surface cuts mm -hmm. when we're doing when we do in repair we are assuming the responsibility of repairing the street that we excavate to to uh, to access our utility so yes we have taken that responsibility over Having said that, there's a an outstanding about 1,200 locations right. that the city will take, would continue to take responsibility, and they're actually about to launch a contract. They have contract in place to finish those 1,200 locations this year. Yeah, I just I want to see that number um, monitored, and, and because that changeover, because uh, like I would say a ton of the communication I get in terms of customer dissatisfaction are sort of projects that are in varying states of done. Um, and I want to make sure that we can recognize right. what projects we are in varying states are done versus which projects we're waiting on somebody else to finish and close out. Right. So moving forward, everything we touch will be ours and we, we, will, we will be providing you information relative to how many of those we've done mm -hmm. and how soon after the repair, underground repair, was finished, we restored the pavement. Mm -hmm. So we're getting closer and closer. I want it to be three weeks. Okay. So I'm gathering information now of locations, how many we're doing, mm -hmm. how we, this is a hybrid year where we're catching up. Got it. But then moving forward, we want to be on top of things. So, for, so I would like to see those two things represented okay. in the, in yes, the so Cause I, that's, that's what I want. Yeah. Yeah. We're, Backlog we're right and then going forward. And, in, and going forward, I want to understand how long it's taken us to finish the project yeah. from when we start to when, when it's sealed back up. Yeah. So and when we open the street to when yes, it's closed, when it's closed okay. because that's something that people need to understand. Yep. Yep. And we, we have that data. We can certainly, okay. I agree, but I don't think that this that. dashboard is the best format, maybe a burn down chart, something separate, sure. where we can look just at that. That could be a standalone. Yeah. 
Yeah, we get to vote the same amount. Because it's so that. crucial and yep. important for our customers to, to see that. Yes. Are we letting people know who's responsible? Like for the this, if there's a backlog thing, everyone's going to think it's us unless we send a letter <laughs> saying it's the city. <laughs> mm -hmm. Best we can. I mean, I mean yeah. are we com communicating with them? I mean, is there a reason not to? Because it's you know they they say it's sewage and water board when it's. Not any open hole in the street becomes sewage and water. Yeah, board. even potholes, you you know, old streets. Um, I, I'm not sure how we can do that. Target the 1,200 locations and the abutting owners and inform them that DPW is on its way to fix that on our behalf. That can you tell from our system if we get a call complaining about it? When we get a call, we would we would do tell them that yep, this is on the max pave program and DPW is working toward repairing that. But only when we're asked, okay. we're not proactively reaching but, out. But the, the customer service people have easy access to that information. I wouldn't say easy, but it's it's there somehow. Yeah, so. I mean, they, they'll be able to see that there's an open work order and that it's in it's And it does say Max Bave next to it, mm -hmm. typically, so that would allow them to say DPW is responsible for that. Yeah. Even though, not to complicate things, we are kept Touching some of those just because of the urgency, we're not waiting for the DPW, we're just doing them. So it kind of brings some deviation from what we can accurately say. I mean, it's good that we're fixing them, but it's got it. Yeah. So, I mean, what this illustrates partially is the challenges that we have with our work order management system that we need to replace. Which is work coming. Yep. All right, and then working to the last uh, of the six focus areas, organizational and operational improvement. Um, some of the key tactics from 2022 that were created um, was the development and implementation of new, a new management structure for the general superintendent's office, um, which is the new structure with the three deputy general superintendents. Um, and so that was, I think, a really successful project for this group um, to look at ways that we can work with civil service to really um, sort of change the way um, that things are are structured uh, within the utility. And another huge win for us um, in this group with the civil service was um, to develop and receive approval of a new project management series within the civil service. Um, so I know that had been a huge gap for us for a long time that, um, you know, we as a utility have a, a huge need for skilled project managers. Um, and oftentimes what we had to use uh, for those jobs would be engineers or um, what in the civil service is called like the, the management development analyst or specialist series. Um, the challenge there being that oftentimes we don't need an engineer, we need a project manager, um, and that the management development series is not necessarily skilled enough and often has lower pay um, than what a more skilled project manager would expect to make in the industry. Um, and so this is a, a huge win for us and, and frankly for the city because the city can also use this series now. Um, all the city civil service agencies can use it. Um, and I know we're looking forward to hiring some folks under this series this year. Um, 2022 tactics that are continued um, would be to um, continue to work on the safety liaison program so that we can continue to drive um, our safety goals. Um, and then of course, as I mentioned, I have a number of goals that I've continued into this year looking at how we can better track the strategic plan implementation process. So exactly what we're doing here today. Um, some new tactics for 2023 um, will be to implement our West Power Complex uh, staff transition plan. So looking at ways that we can ensure those staff are getting this, the new skills and the, the things that they need as we transition our, our power generation system. Um, and to do a very similar process with the smart metering. So looking at our, our current meter reading and meter shop staff and how do we transition them into new jobs that support the smart metering program? I think in this economy, it's super, super important we underscore how we're creating um, uh, strong paying jobs um, and, and what the actual impact on employment some of these technology upgrades are gonna, gonna do. Yep. Mm -hmm. What I don't want to look at is that we've sort of undercut or eliminated X number of entry level jobs and so we've disenfranchised a big chunk of our, uh, our potential population. Um, because the jobs that we created are beyond what they are going to be able to be retrofitted for. Um, I don't, I, I'm, I'm in favor of the progress. I like the West Power Plant as a, as a concept. I love what we're doing with smart metering. But I think we also have to be very, very mindful of 
what our employee population is, how this is going to impact them, and whether or not we're going to have a material effect on the number of jobs we have um, at various um, entry points into the system. Absolutely. I think that's been a key goal of ours on both of those programs from day one, and I know we've been engaging with those employees, making sure that they're aware that this change is coming um, and that it is 100% our intention to maintain their employment with us in new roles that will be uh, better jobs in many way because they are gonna be more skilled and they're going to receive the training for those skills and they'll often come along with higher pay. Um, and so that's something that we're working with civil service to sort of change the classifications. For instance, someone who today is a meter reader may become someone who is a meter inspector in the future mm -hmm. who goes out and troubleshoots issues with the smart meters. Um, and so that's gonna come along with uh, better skills or higher level of skill. They'll receive that training and they'll be able to receive um, better benefits for that, that new job. All right. Um, what's the difference between the second bulletin under 2002-22 continued and recruiting effectively a, a continuous improvement officer as a new tactic? Uh, so essentially it is a, um, the, the com continued one is uh, more of a budget thing. Um, it, that continuous improvement officer position has been, had been approved by civil service several years ago and had been on a budget request every year and just hadn't been funded. Um, we can actually kind of mark this completed now because as of the new budget being It says approved, funded and filled. Yeah, it should just be fund. <laughs> and, then, um, and then it will be a recruit and actually on board um, for this year. All right, so looking at the dashboard, because we, um, I think Chad wasn't available for the last meeting, so I need to follow up with him personally to get updates on some of these tactics. Um, under change management, many of that has to do with, um, because the continuous improvement officer position was not funded um, in 2020, or 2022, um, most of those goals just sort of sat for last year, and now that it's been funded and we can recruit and fill that position, um, we can continue to drive progress under that goal area in 2023. Um, we did complete two um, process Im improvement projects last year um, and then are continuing to track the data on some of the safety related stuff and our O&M costs um, per account so that we can look at, and again, these are actually benchmark data uh, that you're looking at there for those two things um, that comes from the American Water Works. So we are um, high there and we wanna look at ways that we can drive that down. So kind of looking overall at the plan, this is just sort of showing you the entire, all six focus areas, the progress there, quite a bit of blue, a little bit of yellow, some red there that we need to work on. Um, again, most of those red ones in workforce had to do with um, turnover and staff last year. So we can hopefully see those rebound to blue this year fairly quickly. Um, and then, yeah, so we are just continuing to do these quarterly meetings, which um, I know Janet and I talked about last week have been very impressed that the staff are, are coming to those meetings consistently and are very engaged. Um, and I'm looking forward to continuing to add additional tactics at the next meeting now that they're sort of getting used to thinking about how do we add new, new work as we complete work um, and just continue to get into this cadence of sort of process improvement throughout the year. Tyler, I think when we're doing an annual plan, we should have the plan in place as the new year yep. starts. We've got the 2023 plan is just full of TBDs. Um, do you think we can, if we meet again in two months, we can get see that? The, real, the real deal. Yeah, see the real deal because a, an annual plan that's not done in, when the year starts doesn't yeah. do much good. Definitely, and that, that um, I think that part of that was because this was our first year of like, you know, we had completed our first year work plan last year. Mm -hmm. And so as a part of the quarterly meetings, you know, when we came to the, the fourth quarter meeting in 2022, um, I think it was more about setting the expectation for how are we gonna do this work planning process? 
I think that we were hoping that we could sort of discuss how that would look in that meeting and then jump right into it. And what I found was that folks really needed some time to look, like wrap their mind around, okay, now what does next year look like? And so we decided to sort of then put off most of the 2023 planning until the first quarter of this year. And so I think now that we've set that expectation and they're kind of having a better understanding of how that'll work, going into next year's planning, we can do it the we last can, quarter. We can actually get on the, the right annual planning. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Any, thank you, Tyler. Yep. Any Maurice, anything? No, that's I think that get that gets what I what I need. I, I like that that um need for sort of real numbers in real time. Yeah. And in those areas that we specifically spoke of that we're looking at tracking, please add those to the yep. grid. Um, and then whatever we can do to make this these graphics better. Yeah. Because I, I, I get what we're trying to show and ooh, yeah. I'm not quite uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really happy with the tool I'm either. Not quite I'm, landing I'm here. tied up this one like this. <laughs> yep. 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 It's a, it, you know, we're kind of like shoehorning into a product and I'm, I'm not sure that it's maybe the right tool for us. So I want to explore what mm -hmm. our options are to do a dashboard that actually meets our needs. Okay. Sounds good. So um, is there any public comment? No public comment. Sure. Okay. Then if there are no other matters, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>